Welcome back. Before I start this particular topic, if you look at the corner over there, there's a red subscribe button. Make sure you tap it and subscribe to my channel. In this video, I'll be looking at 8.5 modeling with parametric equations. 8.5 represents chapter 8, section 5 of the Pearson A level maths, pure maths year 2 textbook. In this particular section, I'll be explaining how to tackle problems involving parametric equations, but those problems being in context. Here is a past exam question. A plane's position at time t seconds during its descent can be modelled with the following parametric equations. x equal 80t, y equal 3000 minus 30t, t is more than 0 but t is less than k. Where x is the horizontal distance travelled in metres and y is the vertical height of the plane in metres. Part A show that the plane's descent is a straight line. The first step is to write down the parametric equations. So I've got x equal 80t equation 1, y equal 3000 minus 30t equation 2. The second step is to take equation 1 and make t the subject. So if I do that, I obtain t is equal x over 80. I can call this equation number 3. Now to find the Cartesian equation, all I need to do is substitute equation 3 into equation 2. So if I do that, I obtain y equal 3000 minus 30 in bracket x over 80. If I simplify this, my answer will be y equal 3000 minus 3 over 8x. The equation y equal 3000 minus 3 over 8x is of the form y equal mx plus c, hence the plane's descent is a straight line. Don't forget to write your conclusion. Moving on to the next part of the question. Given that the model is valid until the plane is 30 meters off the ground, part B, find the value of k. Now k represents the end limit of t. We know that x is the horizontal distance and y is the vertical height. So over here, it says given that the model is valid until the plane is 30 meters off the ground, that means that the maximum value of y is 30 meter and we want to work out the corresponding value of k for which y is 30 and that k represents t. So I start off by writing y equal 30. My next step is to replace the y with 3000 minus 30t. All I need to do now is make t the subject. After making t the subject, I get t equal 99, hence k is equal 99. Part C, determine the distance travelled by the plane in this portion of its descent. So when it says this portion of its descent, we're looking at t is more than 0, but less than k, where k is 99. So we've got t is more than 0, but less than k, which is 99. I want to work out the coordinates when t is equal to 0 and when t is equal to 99. Here are my two coordinates. The first coordinate is calculated by substituting t equals 0 into the parametric equations. The second coordinate is calculated by substituting t equal 99 into the parametric equations. Here is the graph of y against x for t is more than 0 but less than 99. Okay, now. From this graph, I can actually draw a triangle over here separately. I know that this vertical distance over here will just be 3,000 take away 30. And this horizontal distance over here, 7,920, ladies and gents, is just this horizontal distance over here. The distance travelled by the plane in this portion of its descent, I'm going to call it D. To work out D, I can just apply Pythagoras' theorem on this right angle triangle. And by applying Pythagoras' theorem, I get d is equal to 8,485.86 meters to two decimal places. Here is another past exam question. A bridge is designed using the following parametric equations. x equal 40 over pi minus 2 sine t, y equal minus cos t, t is more than pi over 2 but less than 3 pi over 2. Given that one unit in the design represents 10 meters in real life, a very important scale, ladies and gents, part A find the highest point of the bridge. Now the height of the bridge represents y, the width of the bridge represents x. If I want the highest point of the bridge, I want y to be a maximum. So first of all, I'm going to start off by writing the equation for y. 
Okay, now, if I look at this equation very carefully, I've got that negative in front of the cos t. So I want cos t to be a minimum. That is, I'm going to replace cos t with minus 1. So y max is equal to minus 1 times a minus 1, which is just 1. Now, one unit in the design represents 10 meters in real life. So, the highest point of the bridge would just be 1 times 10, which is 10 meter. Part B, find the width of the widest river this bridge can cross. Now, if we go back to the interval for t, we see that t is more than pi over 2, but less than 3 pi over 2. To work out the width of the widest river that this bridge can cross, all we have to do is take t equal pi over 2 and substitute that into the equation for x, and then take t equal 3 pi over 2 and substitute that into the equation for x, and then work out the difference in x for those two t values. Substituting t equal pi over 2 into the x equation gives me x equal 0. Substituting t equal 3 pi over 2 into the x equation gives me x equal to 8. Now the difference in x will be 8 minus 0, which is 8. I know that one unit in the design represents 10 meters in real life. My conclusion is that the width of the widest river this bridge can cross is therefore 80 meters.